Hey, I'm John Cannell, and today on Preppy Kitchen, we're making an amazing chocolate carrot cake from my new book. So let's get started. First off, set your oven to 350 Fahrenheit. We're gonna get all the dry ingredients together first, starting with 300 grams of all-purpose flour. That's two and a quarter cups. I also want half a cup or 40 grams of cocoa powder. You could use natural or Dutch processed. Two teaspoons of baking powder, one teaspoon of baking soda, and one and a half teaspoons of salt. This makes a big three layer eight inch cake and I have to tell you, the frosting on it is gonna blow your mind. And that chocolate carrot cake filled with hazelnuts is excellent as well. Together, they're a match made in heaven. One tablespoon of cinnamon, in you go. Three quarters of a teaspoon of allspice, along with our next spice, which is cardamom. Mm. To help amp up the chocolate flavor, I'm adding one teaspoon of espresso powder. You're not gonna taste coffee, you're just gonna get more chocolate flavor from that espresso powder. Okay, sift it out. This is like lump city on the inside. Look at this, cocoa boulders. Mm -mm. It's literally like all chocolate boulders in there. Give this a quick whisk. This has so many delicious spices in it. And when we add the carrots, the hazelnuts, all these amazing things in, it's gonna be heaven, oh my gosh. I'm gonna set this aside. And I'm gonna remind you, we're gonna take one tablespoon of this to toss with some other stuff. So pop that aside, grab your cutting board. We're gonna do a little bit of prep work now. So this video is extra special to me because I'm previewing one of the recipes from my new book. And in it, you'll find over a hundred new recipes I've never shared before. The book's organized by the season. It captures the magic of each time, as well as our first year here at Hedgehill Farm. In the summer, we have light, amazing flavors with all of those fresh fruits and produce that you can find. In the winter, it's cozy time. We are inside nesting and just having the most amazing comfort food ever. I wanna thank everyone who's ordered a copy already. It means so much to me because this book was a labor of love and it has like all of my favorite recipes as well as tons of family recipes that I've never included on the channel before. If you don't have your copy yet, order yours today. There's links in the description box below. But for now, our carrot cake needs some freshly grated carrots. So get your box grater out. I'm gonna give them a quick grate. This gives you like a wonderful flavor as well as adding a ton of nice moisture into your cake. One of the saddest things a carrot cake could be is oily. We never want that to happen. So today we're gonna use applesauce, sour cream, carrots, and a little bit of butter and oil together to make it the most wonderful soft melt in your mouth cake with a little bit of crunch. For this cake, you'll want one pound of carrots grated. So go ahead and get your scale out or really carefully eyeball that two pound package you got at the grocery store. One pound of carrots, nicely grated. Ooh, look at that. I'm gonna set my carrots aside for just a few minutes and now it's time to chop my toasted hazelnuts. So my hazelnuts were in the oven at 350 for like about 10 minutes. Just give them a good shake halfway through so they brown evenly. Whenever you use nuts in a recipe, especially for a dessert, you really need to toast them. If you're anti-hazelnut, Walnuts, pecans, any nut will really be nice in this. I do like the combination of chocolate and hazelnut with the spices and the cream cheese frosting and the secret ingredient in the cream cheese frosting. Nice fine chop. And you can always toast a little bit more than you need for snacking. You gotta be realistic in the kitchen. I wanted to do something really fun for the decoration on this because it's in the cookbook. It's a really special celebratory cake. And I thought, hmm, how can we gussy up a carrot cake? So after the cake layers go into the oven, I'm gonna show you how to make candied carrot curls. They're really delicious, but they're so pretty and actually really easy too. Hmm, resisting the urge to eat all these hazelnuts myself. I'm glad I made more than I needed. They go into a small bowl along with that one tablespoon of the dry mixture, to sprinkle it in and give it a toss. This, of course, will help things not sink. So you want the hazelnuts distributed throughout the cake, not all on the bottom. Mmm, ooh. Last up are the wet ingredients in a large bowl. We're gonna add four room temperature eggs. This is a great cake because there's no mixer involved. This is a stir together cake that comes together in a snap. And if you have little ones at home, they would love to help you and it's really safe to do it too. 
I'm also adding in half a cup of applesauce. And if you know, you know applesauce is so good in carrot cakes. One quarter cup of sour cream. This gives you more moisture and a little bit of tang. Half a cup of vegetable oil. Half a cup of butter, it's 113 grams. Using a combination of butter and vegetable oil is nice because butter gives you like that wonderful buttery taste, but having the vegetable oil means the cake's gonna be soft when it comes out of the fridge. Because chances are, you're gonna store your cake in the fridge, you're not gonna eat it all as soon as you decorate it. Okay, give that a little bit of a mix just to give it a start. Also adding in two teaspoons of vanilla, bringing my scale back for the sugar. I want one and a third cup of granulated sugar, that's 247 grams. Turn the scale on. I'm also adding in half a cup of brown sugar, it's 116 grams, and if you ever pack brown sugar, you probably know this already, but it's a good idea to break it up in your fingers before it goes into the bowl. Otherwise, you end up with lumps that never go away. My scale's done again. Mix this until it's really well distributed. I don't want any lumps of sugar or sour cream hanging out. For added richness and ooey gooey deliciousness, I'm also gonna grate two ounces of a nice dark chocolate. I'm using bittersweet, but semi-sweet's totally good too. Cake batter is ready to come together, so add the dry ingredients into the wet. I'm gonna stir this together until it is almost combined, so I'm not gonna mind seeing a couple streaks here and there of flour. This is because I have more things to fold in, and in folding those in, we'll finish mixing. The enemy of so many cakes is over mixing. Okay, this is almost mixed, so now I'm gonna add in all of my carrot. It looks so much, <laughs> so it's a lot of carrot. As well as my hazelnuts. This is the first time I'm sharing this recipe with you. All the cookbook's recipes are like in the cookbook and they're brand new, but I have been like recipe testing these a lot and then just making some for fun, so I made this recently for a friend's birthday and she was like very happy, and I was very happy. Okay, last up, all that amazing shaved chocolate. Ooh, very nice. If you hear any crashing or flopping, it's our St. Bernard puppy, Buddy. It's like very awkward and gangly at this point. Okay, perfect, this is so nice. I'm gonna plop these into my three prepped eight inch pans. I buttered and floured them and they have a parchment sheet on the bottom, but you could use baking spray if you want to. I would never eat raw cake batter, but if I did, that tastes so good. <laughs> Ooh, okay, into the cake pans. I also love that in this recipe, the chocolate adds so much, but it still lets the other flavors shine through. So there's like a lot of spices in here, the carrots, the hazelnuts, that frosting, it's all gonna work together. Level those cake layers out before they go into the oven, just so they bake up nice and even. These are ready to go into the oven, 350 Fahrenheit for half an hour or until a skewer comes out clean from the middle. In the meantime, we're gonna make our candied carrots. While our cake layers are baking, I wanna make these super easy and cute candied carrots. One cup of sugar into a small pot, one cup of water into the same pot. This is gonna to come to a boil just so it turns basically into a simple syrup. Okay, pop it over here. Give this a stir just to dissolve the sugar. Asuka. While my bath of sugar warms up, I'm gonna slice one large carrot with a vegetable peeler. And the first one is a waste. You can nibble on that if you want. Now we're gonna apply pressure because I want a thicker slice just like this. Don't try and use a knife, that'd be crazy talk. Also, set your oven to 225. We want it nice and low. If you want, you could totally do these carrots the day before. My carrot shavings are bouncy and beautiful. Pop those carrots in and don't worry if they're sticking out and a little crazy, they'll settle down and go into that solution as soon as they start softening up. Just give them a little bit of a twirl every once in a while. And mind the heat to make sure it doesn't boil away too crazy. It's supposed to be a low simmer. All right, these carrots had a total transformation. It's basically a candied glow up because they are now beautiful. Oh. <laughs> They're translucent, scalding hot. <laughs> so now you're just gonna unravel them and place them flat on this wire rack. Just be gentle because since they're candied now, they lost a lot of their structure. They're soft and delicate. And we definitely made more carrot strips than we need, but some are gonna break 
and some you could serve with the pieces. Oh my gosh, I snuck a couple bites and these are so good. I love candied fruits. And if you want, I can do a candied fruit video for you on the channel. Just let me know. Like, oh, it has a rip. Mm. <laughs> so now these are gonna bake at 225 for 10 to 15 minutes. At the 10 minute mark, take a look because they should be tacky but not dry. If they're dry, they're gonna crack and they can't curl into these beautiful little ringlets. But if they're tacky, they'll hold their shape. My carrots are out of the oven and at this point you have to work a little bit quickly. You're gonna grab something that's round, usually it's a wooden spoon handle, and then just twist the carrot pieces around. And if they baked a little bit too long, they're gonna be kind of crispy and it'll be difficult. Just like that. And normally you can do two carrots per wooden spoon handle. You want these carrot curls to be basic, almost touching as you twirl them up. And one last thing is if they're kind of springing back because the slices are a bit thick, just go ahead and like wrap some twine around them and it'll hold them in place while they dry. This might seem a bit fussy, but it actually goes by super quick and I swear it's one of the easiest ways to decorate this kind of cake. My candied carrots are all wrapped up. They need to dry at room temperature now so I can slide them off and onto my cake. Just place them either back on the wire rack or I'm using another wooden spoon to prop them against so they're not touching anything and they won't stick. Set that aside and now it's time for the frosting. For this amazing frosting, we're adding two eight ounce packages of cream cheese right into the bowl. Make sure the cream cheese is really room temperature. You do not want hard pieces of cream cheese because they will not mix in. I'm also gonna add in one cup or 226 grams of unsalted, very room temperature butter as well. Nice and soft. Add that in and now it's time to cream it until it is really well mixed. So no lumps. Take your mixer to medium high and we're gonna beat this for three minutes until it's really smooth and creamy. Scrape the bowl down at least once. While it's mixing, I'm adding a quarter teaspoon of salt. And here you go. And there's more delicious things to come. Okay. Scrape that bowl down. Ooh, this is such a good temperature. And you can tell because there's no lumps, it's all uniform and nice. I love it when that happens. Finish mixing it up. That looks great. So now we can add in, oh, about half a teaspoon of vanilla, maybe a tiny bit more. One orange zested. This is the magical ingredient, and if you've never had an orange cream cheese frosting, ooh, this is gonna blow your mind. Blow your mind. It's actually one of Brian's all-time favorite frostings. Add that right in. Mix this up just to distribute all that delicious stuff. And we're gonna grab the powdered sugar. <laughs> and just start dumping it in. We're gonna add in six cups of powdered sugar a cup at a time. And if you have a batch of lumpy powdered sugar, sift it out, you don't want lumps in this. This is not lumpy at all. Mix it on low so there's no powdered sugar explosion. You're gonna see this frosting is so soft as you add the sugar in. The sugar actually makes it even more runny, but once you get to six cups or so, it'll be a really nice consistency. And if it's a warm day and it still feels hot, you can actually chill the frosting and it'll thicken up. Mmm. We definitely have to scrape the bowl down, just FYI. I guarantee you're gonna find some clumps of cream cheese on the bottom. If you don't have a stand mixer, by the way, you could definitely make this recipe with a hand mixer. I would just go a little bit slower because you're gonna beat a lot of air into it with those beaters. Once incorporated, close your mixer up and beat on medium for one minute until your frosting is nice and fluffy. Don't eat it all right now. It's gonna be very tempting. This looks so good. We're ready to assemble our cake now, but we're gonna assemble it in two parts. We're gonna build it and chill it, then finish it. Just FYI, this is a giant cake with cream cheese frosting, so it needs a bit of chill time to get that stability because cream cheese frosting is the most amazing thing ever, but it's slightly soft. After about an hour of air drying, unless it's super humid that day, it'll take longer, 
Um, we're gonna just glide those carrot strips off. If they come off like a little bit wonky, normally you can just give them a little curl and let them finish drying out and they'll hold their shape really well. It's just the inside needs to be exposed to air as well. Full disclosure, I actually made two batches of these and ate one entire batch because they are that good. My layers cooled in the pan, they popped out so easily and now just add that onto your cake stand along with one and a half cups of frosting, nice and generous. Three of these giant scoops. Give it a little spread. Ooh, this frosting is so good. <laughs> so good. I'm actually very excited to eat this because the last time I made this cake, it was for a friend's birthday. So clearly I just delivered it to her. I didn't have any. Now I get to have some. Spread that out. Ooh, look at that jiggle. Last cake layer. <laughs> That's so good. I would eat the cake just like this and be happy, but we're gonna coat it with the frosting, add chocolate curls, as well as some of those candied carrots. So, before we add this into the fridge, I'm just going to kind of even this out a bit. So it's almost like a crumb coat. I might as well just add a paper thin layer of frosting on top too, so it stays nice and moist in the fridge. This can go into the fridge now half an hour. In the meantime, we'll make some chocolate curls. Time for some chocolate curls. You could use a hair dryer, you could use a heat gun, or a little blowtorch. Just warm the chocolate slightly, not too much. And then you're gonna use a knife or a vegetable peeler to get little curls or shavings. It's not deep, don't worry about getting like the perfect curl. It's just gonna get smashed onto the side of the cake. There you go, just, just need little shavings of chocolate. My cake is slightly chilled, look at these candied carrots that are glowing with all natural colors and they're delicious too. We're gonna finish our cake off by adding all the remaining frosting on the outside. I'm gonna warn you, you might be tempted to get the perfect mirror smooth finish. Don't worry about it. We're gonna be covering this cake with very distracting things. So you just need a smooth-ish finish. The top's gonna be covered with these candied carrot curls, so it needs to be like just a thin layer. I had to pop this onto a turntable because it's my happy place and it makes it so much easier to smooth your cake out. That's the top, now for the side. <laughs> I'm gonna use a bench scraper just to give a nice, even coating of frosting for the outside. See how fast that is already? If you see a lean, you say something, <laughs> so this cake is totally leaning right now. The nice thing is we can just smush it over. It's as easy to fix as that. If things are really wobbly, I always tell people to put a skewer through the center of the cake and that'll help just stabilize everything. The frosting's pretty translucent, so chances are you might see some of the layers coming through at this stage, but don't worry about that. The way to get a nice edge with your cake is to use an offset spatula that's clean and pull in as you turn slowly. Clean it off and repeat. Use a damp towel just to clean the edge off before you go any further. Now, channel your coldest hands for this moment. We're gonna add a skirt of chocolate shavings onto the bottom. Now you're gonna be adding a little bit more chocolate just so it goes kind of like a third of the way up, but it's not like a horrible line. It's nice and an easy gradient. That looks pretty good. After everything, I'll come back with some final little chunks of chocolate. But now for the fun part, I'm gonna place these beautiful carrot curls on top in a nice mound. Start off with your least successful curls for the bottom. Just keep adding until you're satisfied and happy. You're gonna take some of these off when you cut the cake, but it's so nice for the presentation and I think it's as elegant and unexpected. Ah, so carefree and joyous. I'm so happy I got to preview this recipe from the cookbook with you. This is gonna be really good. That is an explosion of flavors. The orange, carrot, spices, chocolate, hazelnuts. It sounds like a lot, but it comes together in a symphony of flavors that you're gonna love. I hope you get a chance to make this recipe. I hope you pre-order the book. And if you like this video, check out my cake playlist.